Auckland City, um, who have been a very successful team this year. I think they've won quite a few competitions, and um, I think they'll be, or I think they won the O League as well. So you'd think a club like Auckland City will probably be very much at the forefront of this new competition if it does come on streams. Thank you very much for joining us this afternoon. Um, let's have a look at, um, first of all, how, before we get to the uh, professional league that's supposed to be coming here in a two years, tell us a bit about how long and exhausting your season is for your players in your Auckland City Club and the various competitions they have to play in as amateurs. Yeah, good uh, good afternoon, um, Brendan. Yeah, no, look, we, we've had a very exhausting season. We've ended up playing 42 matches. Uh, in all, in, all of this have been done in 35 weeks. The players are absolutely mentally and physically exhausted. Uh, we started off with a 22-game Northern League, um, which which we won, and then, of course, interspersed with that. And going past it was the, the Chatham Cup, which we played five games in, and that, we also won that. Then we had the um, the Oceania Champions League, which was also in amongst all that, where there was, we played five matches and uh, we managed to scrape through on that as well. And then we had the 10-team uh, National League, where we played uh, nine games plus the final, 10 games, and because that totals up to 42 matches. And all done in 35 weeks, as I said before, and so absolutely exhausting, not only for the players, but for... The volunteer helpers that um, that um, uh, are necessary at clubs to set up and do all the vital bits and pieces that are necessary to keep a club going. So all in all, very exhausting for all of us concerned. I guess if they're all on six-figure or seven-figure sums, these guys, it might made the pills taste a little sweeter. But I presume that this is still an amateur game, isn't it, at domestic level in New it Zealand? Is, it, is, it is an amateur game in New Zealand. And so they don't get any money at all? They don't get match fees? Nope. They don't get a couple of hundred bucks for a, per match? No, they're allowed, they're allowed, under the New Zealand amateur regulations, they're allowed to get up to $150 um, expenses per week. Uh, and that's all they get. So it's an uh, enormous personal kind of cost and toll, I imagine, on these players in terms of trying to uh, marry their commitments to their careers and their jobs, as well as finding 35 weeks to play 42 matches. Yeah, it is. It's it's unsustainable. It's it's. And speaking to some of the other chairmen around the place and some of the other coaches, they're all saying things like, "Our players hit the wall at the start of the national round. Uh, we're pretty exhausted." We're all tired, and I'm saying that's fine. But we've played another ten matches, and you guys, have. so we're 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 feeling totally stuffed. Are you getting um, Are you getting any sympathy here from uh, the f- national NZFA Football Association to make changes to well, lessen the load? We've we've mentioned it on a number of occasions, uh, but again, not in a not in a formal situation, and we have, have actually have written to them. Uh, I think it's just a matter of the clubs. When when the clubs get a chance to meet uh, early in the new year, I think they'll have to to, uh, to get a view on this and, and and approach the national body because it's just it's just far too tough, mm. far too tough for everybody, um, and it's just simply, in my view, not sustainable. And so we get to this uh, announcement, which on the surface of it sounds like a wonderful idea for football down here, uh, this part of the world, the professional league uh, embracing the countries of the Oceania Football Confederation. And we know the next Football World Cup, I think I'm right in saying that Oceania will get one automatic entry into the next World Cup to the champion country from down this part of the world, presumably the winner of the um, or World Cup qualifying tournament or the O-League. So here's this very good news, Ivan. But having listened to what you've just told me about how exhausting and how tiring the current football calendar is for the top players in cities like Auckland and Wellington and Christchurch and other parts of the country, how are you going to find room for this professional league? Well... To be quite honest with you, I've, I've read the announcements just like you you have, and and but at the moment I have absolutely no detail. I don't know how it's going to work. I don't know how they're going to select a team to participate in it because they're talking about a club competition. Now, if that club if that club goes and plays in this competition, it's it's professional. I don't know who pays, and and I mean who pays for people to go there. It's going to sounds like it's going to be expensive, 
and and player need, players will need to be paid, just to, especially if they're away for any length of time from home. Uh, and then what, and once you enter that league, you, you're a professional. You can't come back and play in the local league. So I, I I just don't know how it's going to all work out, and I don't know who, how they pick a team to play in it. But do you uh, think? So look, sorry, carry on. But with all of that, I mean, I, I don't have any answers at the moment, and we've tried to get some clarification from uh, the Oceania people, but they're all they're all away at the moment at, at the World Cup in Qatar. So we're just going to have to wait till they get back and sort of ask a few of these tough questions. I hear what you're saying, and all of the points you've made are very valid, but uh, if we can just, I suppose, put them aside for a moment and just look at it in a slightly more idealistic way. Fundamentally, this is exactly the development that football needs in the Oceania area, though, doesn't it, to turn it into a professional league? I presume if uh, Infantino, if Mr Infantino is singing uh, the praises of it, he clearly probably is happy to contribute financially to its uh, uh, initial launch and uh, hopefully success. So fundamentally, it's a good idea, though, isn't it, for the development of football down I'm sure all your players at Auckland City would love to be playing in a professional league down here. Mm, yeah. How many games are they going to play? Is it a 10-game 10, 10 league? Is it a 20-game league? 30-game league? Um, do they give up everything that they're doing in New Zealand just to play 10 games, for example? I, again, I don't know. Um, and one team at the moment we've got one team playing in the Australian um, competition that's the Phoenix and now do we have another team playing in an Oceania competition and then what happens to our local game uh, mm. to me mm. uh, Brendan there's a lot of things here that need to be sorted out and uh, honestly I, I, I'm a bit like you I don't know at the moment <laughs> But I presume what could happen here domestically is you could streamline these competitions, uh, reducing them effectively from four to maybe one or two, uh, which would then provide some space in the football calendar for this league. I think the uh, O-League at the moment usually comprises of about eight countries, doesn't it? Eight teams in two separate divisions? Yes, that's right. And so, right. That's how the last so yeah. therefore, if you took those eight countries and um, fairly o- obvious and logical ones, all with established football kind of structures, uh, and they played home and away, that's 16 weeks, um, that, and you streamlined the domestic competitions here, you probably could coordinate the two competitions, couldn't you? Yeah, but you need, you need to reduce the domestic season quite a bit to fit those 16 weeks in, of course. Um, but at the end of the day, we currently do that anyway. Um, I just don't know how, how how a professional league, so-called, would improve things that much. Uh, at least, at least, if you've got our current amateur uh, situation, it's open to it's open to all teams to qualify for that. Whereas, if you have a professional league, uh, I suspect they're going to nominate one team from each country. Mm. Uh, it's a bit like the Phoenix. You're there for. You can't get relegated or, pr- or promoted or whatever, you know. Uh, oh, look, this, <laughs> I just don't know how it's going to work. Well, I suppose you... The current you... system allows, allows any team in New Zealand to, to, to qualify for the O-League. Mm. Uh, under this professional system, it's maybe only going to be one team, which a, bit like, a bit like the Australian system. Well, if, if you look at sports like, say, rugby and cricket in New Zealand, uh, the, uh, particularly using rugby as an example, which transitioned from a fully amateur sport, which it was domestically back in the 1990s, to a professional sport at the highest level, which is super rugby and, of course, international rugby, um, and presumably something similar would have to happen to football, um, I think we can look back now and see that the transition or the arrival of professional rugby was a great thing for the players, earning a lot of money, but it has largely destroyed the amateur game at club level in New Zealand. Club rugby is teetering on the brink of almost extinction in some parts of the country. Exactly. I think you're, you're, onto, you're onto something really, really, really positive here because uh, I think rugby lost their connection to the, to the, to the amateur game. Uh, and, and I think... That, that you're in that, danger of doing the same. Yes, that's exactly what you're in danger of doing. Whereas if you have everybody's got an opportunity to qualify for the, the Champions League, as it used to be the, the, when the Super 10, I think it was, got going in rugby, uh, the, 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 the teams from New Zealand had to win the right to, to play in that. And that, that maintained the connection with the, with the local game. Mm. But then they got rid of that and put these franchises in place. And I think once you lose that yeah. connection with the local support, 
I think you're in danger of uh, losing it quite a bit, to be honest. Mm, mm. Uh, you end up being too fragmented. And that's what I think could happen here. Yes, well, I think you, you did right. I mean, I think there is a comparison that can be made between rugby and football, the two, um, the two major... Uh, you, look win- at, you look at the way they do it in Europe. In Europe, they, 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 any club feels like they've got an opportunity to get into their Champions League. And every now and again, some of them do. And, and every now and again, they have a dream run. We'll think of Leicester City and things like that. Mm. You know, the big boys generally dominate, but it's always alive for the others. Mm. Yeah, what well, it's a, a very tricky road that the sport has to walk down here. Um, there are yep, ri- rich, yep, ri- right. riches in one hand and problems on the other. So we'll have to wait and Correct. see what happens. And in. if you lose, the, if you lose the connect to the local game, I think we're in trouble. Yeah, I think exactly, and I'm sure rugby administrators yeah. up and down the country at club level would absolutely echo those comments and probably sound a clear warning to football. Be very careful how you progress down this road and do it slowly, deliberately, and try and avoid some of the problems that rugby is now wrestling with. Anyway, Ivan, I thank you very much indeed for yeah. your time today. Much appreciated. Okay. Thank you, Brendan. Anytime. Thank you, mate.